This is WKYT This Morning. Welcome in. Good morning to you. I'm Rebecca Smith. I'm Bill Bryant. Sure is good to have you with us on WKYT This Morning. It's your Thursday, August 4th. We have a lot going on this morning. Now it's 6 a.m. There's been an attempted robbery at a Lexington gas station overnight, but it sure took an unexpected turn. We'll have details that led to a quick arrest just ahead this morning. A drowning in Nicholas County is still under investigation this morning. Coming up, hear what police think may have led to the incident. And hundreds of people have been in line since last night. They're hoping to get free food for a year at Frankfurt's newest restaurant just ahead. We'll have a live look in as anxious customers are right now filing into the brand new Chick-fil-A up there. It's 6 o'clock and we're looking at the Chick-fil-A story and thinking about chicken biscuits, right? Man, those would be awesome right now. Defender Radar Network, we're looking outside, not much going on. I'll tell you this, storms increase later on this afternoon. I'll show you when and how much rain we're expecting coming up. All right, well said, and let's get to the news this morning. New this morning, Lexington police say things took an unexpected turn for a robbery suspect. Police say Kenneth Hopkins tried to rob a gas station off Newtown Pike, but he got a big surprise from the clerk who was working at the time. WKYT's Mark Barber is live now to explain how Hopkins was quickly arrested. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. The man who tried to rob this Shell gas station right here off of Stanton Way got a lot more than he bargained for. Investigators say the clerk stopped the man and held him until officers got here and arrested him. Now, this happened here around 2 o'clock this morning. Investigators say that's right when Kenneth Hopkins walked into the gas station and employed, or rather implied, he had a weapon. After the clerk stopped him and police arrested him, officers did not find anything on him. While everything turned out well, police say this is not how they recommend handling a robbery. Officers are reminding people that in these dangerous situations, anything can happen, so it's best to just let the robber go. As for Hopkins, he isn't going anywhere anytime soon. He's locked up in the Fayette County Detention Center, charged with first degree robbery. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, a real uh, turnabout there. Thank you very much, Mark, for the report. We're tracking a traffic alert in northern Kentucky. The state transportation cabinet says a cattle truck has overturned in Henry County. That's causing trouble. The truck was hauling more than 100 calves when it overturned on I-71 north of Campbellsburg. The loose calves are causing a traffic backup in the area right now. A 60-year-old man is dead this morning after investigators say he drowned while fishing. It happened at the Licking River off Abner's Mill Road in Nicholas County. The sheriff tells us when the man's wife went to check on him, all she found was his dogs and fishing poles. A short time later, search crews found the man's body in the water. Investigators think the man fell off the bank. We would have loved to have found him hanging on to something and, and still being alive, but unfortunately, it, it turned out the way it did. But on the other hand, we were able to recover him quick and give the family some closure. The sheriff says it took crews about an hour and a half to find the man's body. Dozens of people are demanding answers after an oily substance spewed out onto their homes in Powell County. All this started after a natural gas pipeline in Clay City was hit by lightning earlier this week. Investigators are still trying to figure out if that substance is dangerous. The owner of the pipeline, Kendra Morgan, says it is not dangerous. Still during a meeting last night, many in the community say they are concerned. If they tell me not to wash off my feet when I walk outside, not to let my dad and my dogs go outside to use the bathroom, um, not to eat out of our gardens or use our water, then that tells me it's unsafe. A Kinder Morgan spokesperson who was at last night's meeting says that the advice was given simply as a precaution. The company expects to get results back from a third party lab later today. A bizarre theft at a Lexington home was caught on camera. The security video here shows a man stealing rocking chairs from the front porch of a home on West 3rd Street. You can see him pretty clearly. The homeowner says he had also a bike stolen from his home not too long ago. Police say they have not arrested the chair thief. You can watch the entire surveillance video if you're interested on our website, WKYT.com. Uh, that's pretty stark, huh? Attorneys for a man accused of killing a northern Kentucky couple says the defense will need at least nine months to prepare for a trial. Craig Pennington is facing several charges, including two counts of murder. Police say he killed Robert Jones and Crystal Warner last month in Washington County. Their bodies still have not been found. Police say a shoplifting suspect pulled a knife on employees at an Eastern Kentucky Walmart. Police say Scotty Napier was caught trying to steal household items at the Walmart in Harlan. 
Walmart employees stopped him briefly, but when they told him police were on the way, that's when police say Napier pulled out a knife. Police finally arrested Napier after chasing him for hours. He is charged with robbery. The Kentucky Historic Properties Advisory Commission will be holding a meeting in Frankfort today. They're going to be discussing the controversial Jefferson Davis statue that's located in the Capitol Rotunda. The Jefferson Davis statue has been in the Capitol Rotunda since the 1930s. But over the last year, several groups have tried to have the statue removed. Well, many have fought for it to stay. Last month, one group asked the state's curator to give the statue a military designation, which would make it harder to remove. Another group said the statue should be replaced with one of Muhammad Ali. There's a lot of excitement in Frankfurt this morning, where the city's first Chick-fil-A just opened up a couple of minutes ago. And WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is at our alert desk with a look inside the new store. Our first look. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's a lot of excitement, and there should be. There's free food for a year. It's the motivation, and it's why hundreds of people have been in line since some as early as Tuesday morning. Now, here's a live look at the new Chick fil A in Frankfurt. It's the popular restaurant, and it opened at 6 a.m. Now, our live video is not available, but you can see the video you're looking at are people who were lining up and just waiting for the store to open, and they're trying to get their hands on a coupon. The coupon is good for 52 free meals. You know our photographer who's there right now, Tyler, told us that he spoke to a man who has been awake for 40 straight hours just waiting for this coupon. And we're going to definitely show you live video at 630 with more of these people who have been able to enter this restaurant and get that popular coupon. Good way to start the morning, huh? Yes, it is, Michelle. And I may actually have some lunch there from Chick-fil-A today. Who knows? Well, uh, three more school districts actually go back to school today. Barberville Independent, Jackson County, and Mercer County all start a brand new school year today. They're among the few schools that resume classes this week. Frankfurt Independent and Bergen Independent, as well as Estill County schools, all started back earlier this week. Majority of schools across central and eastern Kentucky have their first day of school next week, actually. You can find out your school's uh, back to school start date on WKYT. Now, your zone by zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We're looking all over the region, and things look pretty good there on the roadways. Have not heard of any issues for you, so there's some good news. No rain outside right now. There's some fantastic news, too. Frankfurt looking good. 75 heading northbound in Florence. Not seeing any problems at the interchange of 75 and 71 in northern Kentucky. Heading toward Louisville, I 64 looks good. E Town, no, no problem. Heading down the BG Parkway. And Lexington looks pretty good, too. Corbin sitting there uh, holding on to that I 75 corridor. And we're, do I need to come back over here and hang out? No, we're good. All right, so there's a look over there at the Fender Radar Network. I think I took off a little bit too early. And, and outside right now, nothing going on. And you look back toward Bowling Green, holding on to a few showers here and there, slowly but surely inching their way northwest. Now, here's the look. I mean, you really got to look at this closely. But look at these. They're actually moving north and northwest. But then you look back behind me, and these are heading toward the Nashville area. Why is that? Okay, so we have the spin. It's obvious it's going like this. This is your low pressure system. It's going to be making its way through later on today. That's what's going to spark up with the heating of the day and also the moisture. That will spark up some showers and thunderstorms. Now, this is unfortunate for us. We did get a big break yesterday for most of us. Virtually all of us got a break. Some of us saw a couple of showers. Didn't last long, didn't cause any problems. But those grounds are just so wet. They're so saturated. You do not want any more rain for the next few days. And it looks like. We're going to have that today, unfortunately. Some get it, some do not. It's that type of setup. This is not widespread like last Thursday. Nothing like that. But the, the kind of hit and miss activity, which is not good news for us. We got a big yard sale going on, Highway 127 yard sale. That kicks off 690 miles of yard sales. You got to love that. It goes from Michigan down to Gadsden, Alabama. Gadsden, Alabama actually being where some of my family is from. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, 690 miles. How are we going to fork or look around this? How are we going to get around these storms? Well, unfortunately, today, anywhere from 2 to 8 p.m. is your best bet during that time or during that area, where that area is, 127, that we could see some storms around. So putting your stuff out on the lawns, getting your stuff ready to go, know this. You better have a tarp around. You better have a plan B to pull it inside and make it a garage sale instead of a yard sale. 
On Friday, it looks like those storms should be toward eastern Kentucky, at least for much of your day. And then we get off into the night. Here come some more storms overnight and into your weekend. Rain on Saturday for the weekend, not Sunday. Okay, so Sunday looks pretty good. Saturday, eh, not so much. Just keep in mind. So today and your Saturday look like the best chances to rain in that area. Highway 127 for that big yard sale. Hope everything goes well for you guys, but just know you have to have a plan B. If you're heading out to the lake this weekend, Friday doesn't look all that bad, a storm or two. And also looking towards Saturday. Saturday looks like your best chance. But Sunday finishing off the weekend. It's the last weekend for kids to go back to school. So might as well take uh, take advantage of it. Yeah. The pools, the lakes, the mm -hmm. rivers. Looks I great. would say take off and enjoy. Yeah. Try to enjoy some free time, although a lot of folks have to scramble around, do some back to school That's shopping, exactly right. all of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 A, lot, a lot going, going on. on. Yeah. 610 is our time on WKYT. Let's bring you a little bit of traffic right now. Update you with Officer Don and our look at live drive traffic. Good morning, Don. Okay, I've apparently uh, Don went back to the music out there, 98 won the bull. Let's take a look right now at the region, and you can see everything is clear. We have no reports of any uh, issues or problems. A little bit of heavier traffic on I-75, the normal this time of morning. Here's a look now at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government live drive camera, and there you see Newtown Pike, I-75, and it is looking pretty lively here uh, early on your Thursday. All right, keep it here now for much more on WKYT on your Thursday morning. A teenager accused of a deadly stabbing attack in London is now in police custody. What police think may have been the motive when we return. Back at 615 this morning, Donald Trump is trying to get his campaign back on track amid some signs of turmoil within the GOP. Yesterday, Trump's own running mate split with him over his refusal to endorse House Speaker Paul Ryan. Another Republican announced that he will not vote for Trump in November. Hannah Daniels has the latest on campaign 2016. Campaigning in Florida Wednesday, Donald Trump sought to refocus attention on rival Hillary Clinton. Blaming her for the creation of ISIS. She should get an award from them as the founder of ISIS. And tying her to accusations that the Obama administration made a so called ransom payment to Iran in January. Around the same time, four American hostages were released. $400 million in cash. How does the president do that? How do you do that? This was something all started by crooked Hillary Clinton. The attacks came amid signs of a deepening rift between the GOP nominee and members of his own party. Yesterday, Illinois Representative Adam Kinsinger became the latest Republican refusing to support Trump in November, angry over his feud with a Gold Star family. Trump's own running mate, Mike Pence, also split with him and endorsed House Speaker Paul Ryan. I strongly support Paul Ryan, strongly endorse his re-election. A Fox News poll out Wednesday shows Trump now trailing Clinton by 10 percentage points nationally. Speaking at a Denver-based Thai company, the Democratic nominee attached her opponent's business record. I really would like him to explain uh, why he paid Chinese workers to make uh, Trump ties. This is... One of them, it's got his name on it, of course. Today, Clinton will continue to talk about jobs and the economy at an event in Las Vegas. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. And Donald Trump will campaign in Maine today. One silver lining for his campaign, the billionaire candidate reportedly raised $82 million in July, mostly from small donations. The campaign of the Hillary Clinton campaign raised about $90 million. Authorities in London are investigating what led up to a stabbing spree last night that left a woman dead. Officials say five others were hurt when a 19-year-old man armed with a knife attacked people at Russell Square near the British Museum. The suspect has since been taken into custody. Police say early indications point towards mental health being a significant factor in the case, but they're also looking at the possibility of terrorism as a motivation. A Washington transit officer is facing federal terrorism charges this morning for allegedly trying to provide material support to ISIS. Authorities say 36-year-old Nicholas Young bought gift cards worth over $200, intending to give them to ISIS operatives. Young is the first American law enforcement officer ever to be accused of aiding the terror group. 
Hurricane Earl has slammed into the coast of the Caribbean nation of Belize with winds of 80 miles per hour. It's brought a lot of heavy rain as well. The U.S. National Hurricane Center says Earl has made landfall near Belize City and is moving roughly westward. It is expected to weaken as it moves inland, but it still could bring torrential rains to neighboring Guatemala and to southern Mexico. 618 is the time this morning. CBS Health will add 35 products to its list of excluded drugs next year and no longer cover some treatments for cancer and diabetes. It's the first time brand name can cancer drugs have been taken off CBS's standard list. The company says they're taking a stand against egregious drug price increases that unnecessarily add costs for clients and their members. The U.S. government gives the go-ahead for the first commercial mission to the moon. It clears the way for Moon Express to fly a robotic lander about the size of R2-D2 to uh, the lunar surface next year. Other companies plan to launch missions to Mars or to passing asteroids over the next few years. Walmart is reportedly in talks to buy Jet.com. The online retailer launched last year to take on Amazon.jet, operates like an online uh, Costco or Sam's Club. Memberships cost $50 a year, but members save about 10 to 15 percent on products. Walmart, Walmart is trying to boost online sales as it competes with Amazon. Kate Spade is counting on its popular Cameron Street line of handbags to boost business. Company stock plunged 18% after lowering its financial outlook for the year. The luxury retail market has taken a big hit as travelers pull back spending in stores that depend on sh shopping from tourists. Kate Spade says it will offer more flash sales and restock the Cameron handbags, which sold out in the last quarter. Nike has announced company plans to get out of the golf equipment business. The sports apparel giant says they will no longer make golf bags, balls, and clubs. Instead, they will focus on expanding their line of golf shoes and sportswear. Nike Golf made just more than $700 million for the company last fiscal year, far below, actually, the billions made by the company's running and Jordan brand sectors. Sometimes you go back to what you're known for, right? Our time this morning, 6.20 on WKYT this morning. We're just getting started with all the latest for you. Sometimes the heat can be downright unbearable. <laughs> Coming up, a group of hairy swimmers becoming the next viral sensation after taking a dip in the middle of a popular lake, Tahoe Beach. We'll have that for you. We're really focused on the thunderstorms around here as it looks like they'll be increasing later on this afternoon. I'm going to break down the timing for you, show you how you can plan around these coming up next. Police say a robbery suspect got a little more than he bargained for when he tried stealing from a Lexington gas station overnight. Yeah, he got caught. <laughs> That's what's trending at this hour. Kenneth Hopkins is accused of trying to rob the Shell gas station on Stanton Way off Net, uh, the Newtown Pike this morning. The police say the clerk, though, stopped him and held him before he could do that. Nobody injured in that ordeal. Police say Hopkins is now charged with first-degree robbery. School is back in session for three more school districts this morning. Bar Barberville Independent, Jackson County, and Mercer County students all have their first day of school today. A majority of Central and Eastern Kentucky districts have their new schools starting next week. Seems somebody keeps hitting the repeat button on our forecast. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Yeah, I think we got lucky yesterday and really the day before for the most part of not seeing heavy rain. We just did not see that. If you did pick up a brief heavy shower, it lasted five, ten minutes and it was long gone. It didn't cause any problems. Today, here come some thunderstorms in the forecast. Nothing going on right now, but you saw that back toward Bowling Green. Uh, showers starting to get together, and they'll start sliding our direction as we go through your day. Frankfurt looks good this morning. London, Corbin, no problems. And Lexington coming in at 72 degrees. We get into your afternoon as those storms will be around. Some will get them, some will not. So it's not a 100% chance of rain today. Don't get me wrong, not everybody's going to see rain. But when you do, some heavy downpours will be likely. That's what we're going to be focusing in on. That's the focus of the forecast is watching out for that isolated flash flooding concern. And we'll get into that coming up in a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you in just a little bit. Thank you very much. 625 now here in the middle of summer. You know, everybody needs a break from the heat sometimes, and that includes wildlife. Oh, yes, it does. That was proven earlier this week when a mama bear and her cubs decided to take a dip on the shores of Lake Tahoe. Isn't that sweet? Hmm. Uh, the person who filmed this says she was just enjoying the hot day with her family when she captured the video of the hairy swimmers 
Look at them go. The family of bears showed no signs of being bothered by the groups of swimmers and all the other people around. The kayakers there in the background. I'm sure they're used to that. Buckley says the footage has become a huge hit after receiving millions of views on social media. <laughs> It's a sweet scene. That is isn't really, it really neat. <laughs> yeah, and you just wonder what they think of all the people around exactly. there. Exactly. I'm sure they're used to it, yeah. obviously. Don't uh, seem to be bothered. Nature and civilization collide. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then a little stroll down the beach. Who could blame them for enjoying a day like that, right? Good to have you along. 626 on WKYT, and our top stories are on the way. When we return, two of Kentucky's top Democrats will not be attending this weekend's fancy farm picnic. We'll tell you why coming up at 6.30. Tomorrow's Mega Millions jackpot is $30 million. Saturday's Powerball jackpot is now up to $52 million. We're coming right back on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky morning start here on WKYT. Good morning to you on this Thursday. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope you're having a fabulous day before Friday. It's now 6.30, a robbery gone wrong at a Lexington gas station. Find out how police say the clerk helped them make a quick arrest this morning. We now know more about a body that was found in Grayson County. Just ahead, we are hearing from a couple who made the gruesome discover discovery in a creek. And people have lined up for more than 24 hours. They were waiting to get free food from a brand new restaurant in Frankfurt. We're going to have more from the new Chick fil A that opened up just minutes ago. Coming up on WKYT this morning. Not a bad looking start to the day outside, but I'll tell you this once we approach the afternoon hours, that's when we're going to start to see some showers and thunderstorms slide our direction. You can see that already sprouting up toward Bowling Green. So, heads up for that. We'll talk about that. I'll show you when it moves on in, how much rain we're expecting coming up. All right, here's the latest on WKYT this morning. We're tracking the update on a train derailment that's happened in eastern Kentucky. Authorities tell us it happened late last night on Yellow Creek Road in Knott County near the Perry County line. Police say the road is still shut down this morning. Crews are waiting on equipment from Nicholasville to remove the train and put it back on the tracks. Investigators say the derailment was caused by a minor mistake. There, no, there were no injuries reported in this. We've learned a Bell County jail employee has been fired after three inmates escaped through an open door. The jailer is not releasing the name of that third shift lieutenant. Investigators say a door at the jail was propped open to help cool the facility. They said those three inmates escaped through that open door. All three have been caught. New this morning, we're hearing from the two people who called police after finding a body in a Grayson County Creek. Kim Colston notified authorities after she and another man, Don McKenna, found the body inside a toolbox. And that was floating in Short Creek Tuesday night. Investigators say they're still not sure who the victim is or how he died. A lot of questions. Police say the toolbox is similar to one that you would find in the back of a truck. People living in the area say the creek is normally a quiet and secluded area. And McKenna says she's had a hard time sleeping since making that discovery. It looked like duct tape wrapped all the way around his face. It looked like he was tied up. Police say the body has now been taken to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy, and more details are expected to be released about the situation once that examination is finished. Well, after starting the week off with heavy rain, most of us saw a break in the action yesterday. It was a pretty nice day. Unfortunately, those showers and storms could be moving back across the Commonwealth as we head through Thursday. And WKOT meteorologist Micah Harris is in our first alert weather center. Could tell us all about it. Yeah, you have the clouds laying around right now, and there is a low pressure system. Back toward Bowling Green, that's going to be sliding our direction later on today. Morning hours for the kids going off to school, you heading off to work, no problems whatsoever. First day school for some kids. Hope it goes well for you guys. And once we travel off into the afternoon, unfortunately, you better prepare for some rain in the forecast because there will be some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Some see the rain, some will not. If you do see the rain, heads up, just like last week. Excluding Thursday. Thursday was widespread, but just like last week, some see the rain, some don't. And if you do, yeah, some heavy downpours will be likely. And not only that, that takes you off into the afternoon anywhere from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we could see some flash flooding. Guys, we're going to go over that and focus in on that. Coming up.
It's a pattern we're a little used to. Yeah, know? definitely, for right. sure. It has not been a normal July yeah, right. turning into August. Well, new this morning, Lexington police say things took an unexpected turn for a robbery suspect. Right. Police say Kenneth Hopkins tried to rob a gas station off Newtown Pike. We said tried because he got a big surprise from the clerk inside that store this morning. WKYT's Mark Barber is live to explain how Hopkins was quickly arrested. Hey, Mark. Good morning, Bill. The 19-year-old who police arrested would have been hard for some people to take down. According to jail, uh, to jail records, the accused robber is more than 6 feet tall and weighs 260 pounds. But that was not too much to handle for the clerk here at the Shell gas station here on Stanton Way. Police say that around 2 o'clock that clerk stopped Kenneth Hopkins from robbing the gas station. Officers say even though the 19-year-old acted like he was armed, the clerk was able to hold him down until police officers got to the gas station. Hopkins is now in the Fayette County Detention Center, charged with first-degree robbery. It's the ending investigators wanted to see, but they don't want to see anybody else taking a chance like this. Police say it is important to remember that anything can happen in these dangerous situations. They tell WKYT it is always a good idea to give the robber what they want and then let them leave. Now, while police do not recommend taking any action like the clerk did here this morning, they do say that they are glad everything turned out so well in this case. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, thank you very much for the update from there. Kentucky's annual political picnic, where spicy speeches are served up alongside some really saucy barbecue, it's this weekend in western Kentucky, but there are a couple of high profile Democrats who won't be there. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain is at our alert desk with the details on that. Yeah, Republicans look to have a lopsided advantage during political speeches at this weekend's Fancy Farm Picnic. Two of Kentucky's leading Democrats, Attorney General Andy Bashir and Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes, have both confirmed they are skipping the political event. Bashir and Grimes citing family commitments as their reason for not attending. Republican U.S. Senator Rand Paul and his Democratic challenger Jim Gray will square off during Saturday's picnic. Other speakers include Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Governor Matt Bevin, both Republicans. Now, we've also learned State Senator Ralph Alvarado will be at Fancy Farm this weekend to speak on behalf of presidential hopeful Donald Trump. So it should be an interesting weekend, guys. Well, it'll be interesting, yeah. and the barbecue is always good out there. <laughs> <laughs> Attorney General Andy Bashir's case against a Scott County cemetery and its owner is going to be returning to court today. Bashir's office brought a civil lawsuit against the Crestlawn Cemetery back in May. The lawsuit claims the Georgetown Cemetery took thousands of dollars from customers for grave markers but did not install them. The suit also claims the owner, Dale Shackelford, violated Kentucky's Consumer Protection Act by not maintaining the cemetery. Bashir is asking that Shackelford and the company fulfill all outstanding obligations or provide full refunds to consumers and pay civil penalties. The motion will be heard today at 1 o'clock. Now 637 on WKYT this morning. Deputies in Grant County have arrested a man who they say broke into a daycare twice. They've arrested a 24-year-old do do after they say he broke into the Kitty College daycare in Crittenden on Saturday. They also think he broke into that same daycare a few days earlier. Investigators have not said what was stolen from the daycare. Do is charged with two counts of burglary. A Central Kentucky jail employee is facing charges after police say she admitted to having sex with an inmate. Daphne Kelly, who is a pretrial officer at the Clark County Detention Center, is accused of having sex with an inmate during his work release from jail. Police say Kelly admitted meeting inmate James Bussell at a friend's house on Ashland Avenue at least twice last month. But investigators say the relationship had lasted in months. Kelly is charged with third degree rape because, as a pretrial officer, she had authority over Bussell. We're told she has since resigned. Police also charged Bussell with escape. We're told he's also facing a promoting contraband charge as well because police say he had a cell phone that was used to contact Kelly. A scam warning issued in Franklin County we want to tell you about. Frankfurt police say someone posing as an officer has been calling people and telling them that they owe money and will be prosecuted if they don't pay. Well, the number appears to be local. The caller has a foreign accent. If you get the call, Frankfurt City Police say you should just hang up and not give away any personal or financial information. And there's a lot going on in Frankfurt today. A lot of excited mm, Chick fil A yeah. fans are in the capital city this morning. A hundred people just got word that they have free food for a year.
There you go. That was the call <laughs> to post just before 6 o'clock this morning when the Capital City's first Chick-fil-A opened. Dozens of people have been camped out for days for a chance to win a gift card with 52 free meals. <laughs> One man told us he hasn't slept in 40 hours. Well, that's a problem, right? Uh, now with a gift card in hand and a full stomach, he's ready to crash. No well, wonder. Would <laughs> I would say that would do it, yeah. So you couldn't sleep out there? Is that the deal? Well, I guess you could. But you maybe to stay he was just up for 40 hours. So excited he couldn't, I guess. Wow. You know, all the anticipation. <laughs> you know? If you had a chance to get free meals for a year, I'm sure you'd be excited too. Well, that's right. And all the other customers rushing in up there right now. All right, our time this morning is uh, coming up on 6:40. Time to check live drive traffic. See how things are moving out on the road this morning. Uh, did we tell you there is a little traffic jam around the Chick-fil-A in Frankfurt this yes, morning? Yes, I, I would say so. You know, <laughs> we how do many know chickens about that. are crossing the road, right? Uh, let's take a look at the Fayette Urban County government's live drive cam right now. This is the view from Nicholasville Road and New Circle. And some early birds on the move this morning. No reports of any uh, major problems or delays this morning. We'll keep you informed as we go through the day. Remember, you can get the latest traffic and weather anytime with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. Download that for free in the app or Google Play stores. You'll be good to go on this Thursday. A lot more news coming up for you, and we're glad you're along. August 4th on WKYT This Morning. A young baker in California has started his own business with one goal, helping his mom. A look at the young entrepreneur's success story when we return. A lot of events coming up with the big yard sale. You got the wrapped up down at Lake Cumberland. You got Fancy Farm Travelers. I'm going to go over all this forecast and show you how you can plan around these storms. That's coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Look at all across the state of Kentucky. Things look pretty good all across our region, too. I don't see any problems whatsoever as you're traveling on the roadways, heading off to work here in the next few minutes. No problems whatsoever. Lexington, Frankfurt, all looks well. Go down BG Parkway all the way to E-Town, no problems. If you are heading uh, up 75 into Florence at the interchange of 71 and 75, looks pretty good up that location. 74, I've heard of no issues. Moorhead looks much better this morning than it did yesterday morning. Yesterday morning, a lot of fog. This morning, not so much. So things look pretty good. I do want to show you this. Coming out of Greene County, there's one little cell, but that's heading north and northwest, so really not going to affect us whatsoever. We are dry this morning, but this afternoon, that is going to be a different story. If you are planning on heading out to the pool later on today, you'll want to do it during the morning hours. Grab the kids, take them off during the morning hours because afternoon you'll start to see some storms spark up in the forecast. Here's noontime, not much going on in the low to mid 80s. Look just afternoon. Yeah, 2 to p.m. to 8 p.m. Here we go again with some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Obviously, not everybody gets in on the mix. Some will see the rain, some won't. Head off towards 7 p.m., still looking at some of those heavy downpours. That is what could lead to some flash flooding. Ponding there on the roads, we got to watch out for. Some creeks and streams, they'll still be flooded, and they'll start to rise very rapidly, especially if you have one storm after another. Off into the night, I don't see many issues, but a rumble of thunder overnight is possible. There's no doubt about that. Tomorrow, most of your rain during the daylight hours over toward the east. Most of the rain, which means what? Lake Cumberland. I would still say a storm or two is possible for the raft up as we head towards your Saturday. That's a big event. Hopefully breaking a world record with so many rafts out there on the lake. Should be pretty fun. Look at 8 p.m. as the storms come barreling toward us. So evening and night during Friday, we could have a few rumbles of thunder. But for the day, if you're heading down toward Lake Cumberland, not even just going to the raft up. That's actually out at, at Connolly Bottom Resort. If you're just heading down there, Burnside Marina, head back toward the Jamestown area, uh, all looks well there on your Friday except for a storm or two. So you just can't rule that out. But if you're heading down for the raft up, storms will be around there on Saturday. It does not look great on Saturday. That's hit and miss too. So I'd still go. And Sunday's really nice. So Friday, not all that bad. Sunday, really nice. But in between, when you actually have the raft up, that's going to be at 87 degrees with storms around. So there is a bit of an issue there. If you're heading, traveling westbound there for 
uh, head, heading westbound for oh the fancy farm. Fancy farms. Yeah, I couldn't go. think of what it was called. I'm pointing at. It. I'm like, God, what is that? It's on the tip of my tongue. Because you're heading out there. You're That's actually right. off yeah, tomorrow yeah. and heading uh, that way. Phil Pendleton will be out there to yeah, cover. Yeah, a lot of people will be out there. If you're heading that way, traveling, just know you may run into a few rumbles of thunder too. It's unfortunate, but it is there in the forecast. Still in that pattern. Yeah. Trying to get out of that pattern. I know. Man, it's been it. The, the, the downpours are just incredible That's when right. they come along. That's right. All right, Micah, thank you. It's 6:47 now. Local bakeries in Fresno, California, have a new business to compete with, but they may not mind this competition. Yeah, check him out, huh? Meet Jalen Bailey. Most kids his age spent the summer playing or going to the pool, but not Jalen. Instead, this eight-year-old has started his own bakery. Hmm. Inspired by his mom, Jalen makes cookies in their small rental home, hoping to sell enough so that one day his mom can have her own house. I wanted to save up, save up for a for a lot of money to get a house. I just want, wanted me and my mom to be happy in it. Jalen's Bakery has already shown signs of success. The young entrepreneur received high praise during his first business mixer, enough so that a local professional decided to donate Jalen an oven, allowing him to take his bakery to the next level, one chocolate chip cookie at a time. Well, good luck oh, to him with that. That huh? is so precious. <laughs> Doing that for mom. Yes, yeah, love a it. Great project there. Good to have you with us now. 6:48, rolling towards 7 o'clock, and our top stories on the way on WKYT. Coming up, we'll talk with Donald Trump's campaign manager about falling poll numbers and a rift with GOP leaders, plus several injured and one killed in a deadly knife attack in central London. The latest on the investigation. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning. Next. Welcome back. It is 6.51 this morning. A gas station robbery gone wrong in Lexington, and police say it was because of the clerk. Right. That's one of the stories making headlines this morning. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain joins us now with a look at what's trending on the web. Good morning. Good morning. Lexington police say the clerk at the Shell gas station on Newtown Pike near the interstate held down the suspect until police got there. It's a pretty amazing feat considering Kenneth Hopkins, the guy who was arrested, is 6 feet 1, 260 pounds. The 19-year-old is charged with robbery. We've learned a Bell County Jail employee has been fired after three inmates escaped through an open door. The jailer is not releasing the name of that third shift lieutenant. All three have since been caught. Right now on WKYT.com, you can see surveillance video of a man caught stealing rocking chairs from a home on West 3rd Street. Police are still looking for him. And our most clicked on story this morning is out of Clark County, where a court employee was arrested. He's accused of having sex with an inmate. Be sure to download the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app as we track another round of storms that are expected to move through the bluegrass today. Okay, and with that, you should be good to go. All right, we have some new information just coming in about a crash that involves a cattle truck in northern Kentucky. That truck was hauling more than 100 calves when it overturned on I 71 in Henry County. That's north of Campbellsburg. Loose calves are still on the run. They're causing a traffic backup in that area. One northbound lane is shut down right now, and there's a detour now in place. The state had hoped to have the road open by now. There's still a lot of work to be done. It may be uh, some time now before they can uh, clean up the mess and uh, corral the cattle up there in Henry County this morning. Well, Donald Trump is trying to get his campaign back on track amid signs of turmoil within the GOP. At a rally in Florida yesterday, Trump criticized Hillary Clinton's foreign policy record, labeling her the, quote, founder of ISIS. The attack came on the same day Trump's running mate, Mike Pence, split with him and endorsed House Speaker Paul Ryan in his reelection bid. Illinois Representative Adam Kinzinger added his name to a growing list of Republicans no longer supporting Trump following his feud with the Gold Star family. This morning in Dubai, airline officials are looking for the data and voice recorders after a fiery crash landing of an Emirates plane Wednesday. That crash killed one firefighter, but all 300 people on board the plane got out safely. Hannah Daniels has the latest on the investigation. A team of NTSB investigators will help Dubai officials figure out what caused Emirates Flight 521 to crash land on the runway and burst into flames. Cell phone video shot inside the cabin shows organized chaos. With seconds to spare, some alarmed passengers try to take down their suitcases before managing to escape. Crew members shouted, leave the luggage, jump. Outside the Boeing 777, you can see the neighboring emergency inflatable slide did not deploy. 
This passenger says only one exit was working. Everybody get out through one way. Single door, that's pretty sure. The FAA requires aircraft manufacturers to be able to evacuate a maximum number of passengers from their planes within 90 seconds. That rule is being credited with helping everyone escape from the wreckage in Dubai. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. Tesla will go beyond cars as the company tries to make up for some big losses. Elon Musk has announced that Tesla will unveil plans for a semi truck and for a minibus. The plans are expected within six to nine months. The vehicles won't actually enter production for as many as five years. Tesla teased the announcement of the new vehicles last month as part of Musk's master plan, but the company did not share a timetable. Well, there could apparently be some serious security flaws with chip based credit cards. The concern is over the card's magnetic strip, which is intended to tell a payment machine to use the chip. But researchers say card thieves can simply rewrite the strip's code to make it appear like a chipless card. That allows the thieves to keep counterfeiting. Experts say the flaw will only bolster complaints by retailers who argue they were forced to by banks to accept chip based cards. Retailers allege it could cost them the chip upgrade $25 billion. The U.S. women's soccer team got goals from both Carly uh, Lloyd. That's a Carly Lloyd and Alex Morgan as the reigning World Cup champions defeated New Zealand 2-0 in their Rio Olympic debut. The U.S. dominated from the start to earn the convincing victory and remain unbeaten in 2016. The Americans are trying to become the first team to win the Olympics after succeeding at the World Cup. Next up for the U.S. is a match against France coming up this Saturday. Good luck to the U.S. Yeah. team there. Go USA. Let's check in now with Micah for a final look at our weather. Yeah, and we're looking at some showers and thunderstorms increasing later on today. Not so much this morning. This morning looks pretty good. Uh, but just remember the Highway 127 yard sale, world's largest yard sale. That's what they like to call it. And, and 127 is right through here, okay? So just keep that in mind. Watch this, okay? We get into the afternoon. Look at that sparking up. If you are planning to go there, if you're planning to be involved with it and put some stuff out in the yards, you better have a tarp ready. You better be ready to bring it in because some storms will be around later on this afternoon. 2 to 8 p.m. is your best bet. And then we roll throughout the afternoon. Guys, we got to be watching out for some flash flooding concerns. Now, this is no widespread flash flooding concern, but still some isolated spots where you could get some really heavy rain, maybe one storm after another, and that could add up very quickly, just like what we saw last week. So just keep in mind, heading out about later on this afternoon, that is your best bet. Okay, right. I want to get this in quickly. Uh, they've just been confirmed that it was an American killed in that stabbing attack in Britain overnight. The details coming up on CBS This Morning. We thank you for being with us.